Hey guys, today I'm going to share nine tips on how to save money on yarn and knitting supplies. Whether you're on a budget or saving money for a big purchase, it's always nice to be resourceful and save money. So here are my favorite tips for smart and thrifty knitting. If you're on a budget, then consider turning everyday objects into knitting needles. Chopsticks, pencils, kebab skewers, these make great temporary needles. So these are just takeaway chopsticks. I'm rubbing the two chopsticks together to get rid of any splinters. And this is a great way to make the chopsticks nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna do an extra step of sanding down the chopsticks with fine grit sandpaper. So I'll start with 800 grit and then move to 1000 grit to really make these chopsticks silky smooth. After some sanding, my chopsticks feel amazing. These chopsticks are roughly the equivalent to a 5.5 to 6 millimeter needle. Next up is kebab skewers. I'll get out my finest grit sandpaper and give it a light sanding. My skewers are roughly 3.25 millimeters, so I can use a heavy sock weight or a light sport weight yarn. Lastly, I'll knit with pencils. These are regular HB pencils that are the rough equivalent of a 7 to 7.5 millimeter needle. So I'm gonna use this chunky weight yarn with the pencils. Now before I start knitting, I'm gonna seal off the lead with some nail polish. That way my yarn won't get stained. Once it's dried, I can cast on and start knitting. Now if you wanna add some stoppers, you can put some erasers on the ends of the pencils. And that's how you turn everyday objects into knitting needles. Did you know that many libraries have large collections of knitting pattern books and knitting magazines like Vogue Knitting and Interweave Knits? Yeah, they do. No biggie. <laughs> A lot of libraries in big cities also allow you to borrow books digitally. To see if your library has digital lending, visit your library's website and look for something related to eBooks. It might be called eLibrary or Downloads. It should lead you to Hoopla or Overdrive, which also goes by Libby sometimes. Then you can use your library card, start browsing and borrowing. A great way to save money on yarn is to dye it yourself. It's not as hard as it seems and you'll save a lot of money this way. I like to use food coloring to dye yarn because it's food safe, so I can use my own pots and kitchen utensils. To dye yarn, you'll need a pot, undyed yarn that's an animal fiber, so wool, alpaca, angora, etc. The coloring won't attach onto plant fibers like cotton and hemp so animal fibers only. You'll also need food coloring, white vinegar, a stirring stick and gloves, which are optional, and also coated wire, which is also optional. So I'm gonna make some hanks with this ball of yarn. Hanks are just loops of yarn. So we use hanks to dye yarn so that the food coloring absorbs more evenly. I'll use this frame print to help me wind up some hanks. You can use the back of a chair or a friend's hands, your own knees or a piece of furniture. So I'll just wrap the yarn around the print, around and around until it's the size that I want. I'm gonna go with about 25 wraps around. I just want a little hank. So I'm gonna cut off the yarn here and tie off the two ends into a knot. I'm gonna wrap a loose wire ring around it. This will help me grab the hank really easily when I'm dying. You can also use string for this too. I'm also adding little loose ties around the hank to keep the yarn from tangling. Once the hank is tied off and secure, I'll pull it off the frame and it's ready to be dyed. So I've got three little hanks of yarn here and now I'm gonna soak them into a bowl of room temperature water. So I wanna submerge the yarns completely and let them soak for about 30 minutes. Here I filled a pot with some water and I've also put on my latex glove. This is so that I don't stain my hands with the food coloring. So I've got my vinegar here and I'm gonna use one tablespoon of vinegar for every cup of water in my pot. So the amount of water in the pot doesn't really matter. You just need enough to cover the yarn. So in my pot, I've got about three and a half cups of water. So here I'll add three and a half tablespoons of vinegar. Now I'll get out my food coloring. I'm gonna use this rose color. The amount of food coloring you use is totally up to you. I'm gonna use about uh, 20 drops or so. So I've never used this food coloring before, so this is gonna be a bit of an experiment. Now I'll give the water a stir and bring it to a boil. So once the water's boiling, I'll take out one of my hanks of yarn from its soaking bowl, squeeze out the water and gently drop it into the pot. I'll turn the water down to a simmer and let the yarn soak up that food coloring. And you can see that really quickly, it's just drinking up that rose color. So I'll simmer this yarn until the water runs clear. Right now you can see that the water is still pink. So that means that the yarn hasn't fully absorbed all the food coloring. 
I'll let it simmer for like 10 to 15 minutes until the water's clear. I can add more color into the pot if I want the yarn to be darker or more saturated. And now we just let the pot simmer, giving the yarn a stir every now and again so it doesn't burn. It's been about 10 minutes and the water is pretty clear. So I'll turn off the heat and let the pot sit and slowly cool down on its own. So now that my pot is cool, I'm gonna pour out the water and gently rinse the yarn of any residual food coloring. I'll add some detergent, swish the yarn around, and then rinse until the water is clear and there's no color left. So now that the water's clear, we can hang up the yarn to dry. Here's a view of my balcony and here's my little pink yarn drying. And I repeated the dyeing process with my other hanks using green and yellow food coloring. So after drying, the yarns look amazing. They're so vibrant and pretty. I can't wait to knit with them. Just looking at them, I can already envision like a bright three color pattern. Oh, so cute. To start knitting with the yarn, snip off the ties, undo the wire ring, and look for the knot that leads into the hank. Here it is, right here. So I'm going to unknot it. And now we can roll the hank into a ball of yarn. So I like to put the hank around something to prevent it from tangling. So here I've got a stack of books and I'll throw the hank around it. And you can use your knees or the back of a chair. So I'll grab one end of the yarn and start wrapping it around my hand. And as it gets bigger, I'll just wrap it around itself into a ball. Around and around we go. And now I'm left with a beautiful ball of yarn ready for knitting. If you shop at Michael's, Joann's, or Hobby Lobby, then never pay full price. These are the three big craft chains in the US. Of the three, only Michael's is available in Canada. For everyone else who doesn't live in North America, I'm sorry, this tip doesn't really apply to you guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All three retailers have coupons floating around. If you download their respective apps, then you can see their coupons in real time. At the time of filming, Michael's has a teacher's, military, and seniors discount of 10 to 15%. You just need to show your ID at checkout. Joann's gives 15% off teachers, military, healthcare workers, 4-H and Girl Scouts. So knitters of North America take advantage of these coupons and discounts and never pay full price. One of my favorite things to do when I'm on a budget is to repurpose old sweaters. I do this by unraveling the sweater and reusing the yarn. I'll go to the thrift store and look for a sweater made of natural materials like wool, alpaca, or even cashmere if I can find it. What a dream. Once I find a sweater I like, then I'll look at the construction. I need to take apart the sweater, so I'll look for a sweater that's fairly straightforward to unseen. Very fine sweaters are difficult to unravel and they're not really meant for hand knitting. So stick with sweaters knit from soft weight yarn or heavier when you're looking to upcycle. So this is the sweater that I ended up choosing from the thrift store. This cost a total of $6 US, so it's a really good deal. And it is a one-ply, super bulky weight yarn. It's 100% wool. So from this sweater, I think I could get like three or maybe even four hats out of it. So for $6, that's a steal. So next, what we're gonna do is unravel the yarn so that it's no longer a sweater, but yarn that we can use to make whatever we like. All right, so I'm going to turn the sweater inside out. Most commercial knit sweaters are seamed together. That is the case with this sweater here. I can see big seams up the side and seamed at both of the shoulders. So I can actually just use a pair of scissors to start unpicking the seam. If you're using a thinner yarn, you may need to use a stitch picker like this. So go ahead and pull apart all the seams of the sweater. So I finished unseaming everything. My two pieces are separate now. We are going to unravel each piece into a ball. Now, instead of rolling the yarn into a ball, I'm going to wrap it around this book or large storage bin lid to create a hank. So this is so I can wash the yarn and straighten out the little kinks in the yarn at the same time. I will take one end of it and then roll it onto the book like this. All right, so I've wrapped up my book with a lot of the yarn and now I'm just going to snip it off and tie these two ends together. And I like to add in an extra, you know, colorful yarn just so I can find the beginning and the end of the yarn later on when I'm untying everything. And I'm going to add in a couple more ties in this hank. I'll throw in a tie here. I'll do it on the other side as well. 
I can take it off the book. So now I can lift it up by a yarn tie and it stays fairly secure and it's this loopy loop that we can now wash. I've got a tub of room temperature water and I'm just gonna use a little bit of baby shampoo here. If you've watched the last hack video, you know that I love using baby shampoo and I'm just going to submerge it and then let it sit for like 10, 15 minutes. Now I'm going to push out the water. I don't want to wring it out like this, that's not good. When you can't squeeze out any more, then get out a towel and then lay out your little yarn hank so that it can dry. And then roll it up, squeeze out as much water as I can. Bam, 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 bam. All right, so now I'm just going to let this dry. The next day. So my yarn is dried now and you can see that it isn't so curly anymore. It's nice and straight and even, which will make knitting with it a lot easier. All right, so I'm gonna untie the yarn here and now the yarns leading into the hank have been untied. So I'll get out my scissors and just snip off these yarn ties. So in order to keep the hank open, I'm going to bring in like a canister of coffee. I'll grab one end of the yarn and just start rolling it into a ball. That's it. And ta-da! I've rolled my hank into a ball of yarn and now I can start knitting with it. This used to be a sweater and now I can knit it into anything that I want. Amazing! Join a local knitting crochet or fiber arts meetup. Sometimes these are called guilds. These take inspiration from medieval craft guilds. These were groups of artisans who gathered to organize and support their craft. Many have swap meets where you can exchange yarn and tools with other crafters. A lot of knitters are happy to declutter and offload their yarn collection. Who knows, someone else's yarn horn could be your treasure. Meetups are also a great way to meet other knitters and creative types in your community. New friends being social, yay! I would just Google knitting meetup and your city and see what results come up. Ooh. Somewhat related to the last tip, join Ravelry if you haven't already. It's totally free and it's like Facebook for knitters. On Ravelry, you can shop, sell, or exchange yarns with other users. And you can usually buy yarns for much less than what you'd pay retail. Here I am in the homepage of Ravelry and I'm gonna look for some yarn. So I'm gonna click on the yarns tab. And then right here, I'm going to type in the name of the yarn I want. I love this yarn. Click on that. And now I'm gonna to go to stashes. So this is a collection of all the users on Ravelry who have Malabrigo Rios in their stash. So right now I am looking for water green colorway. And I'm gonna see if I can maybe get this off of Ravelry. So I'm going to search water green to see who has this colorway in their stash. Now I can see that a lot of people have this colorway, amazing. In order to filter down, I'm gonna go here, filter by, will trade or sell. And now I can see that there are five users who have Malabrigo Rios in water green in their stash. And I'm gonna click on this listing and I will send this user a message. Hey there. And then send that message. And that's how you can shop for yarn on Ravelry. Another online option is Reddit. This is a website that's like a giant online forum. The subreddit Yarn Swap is a place specifically for users to exchange yarns with each other. If you need a heavier yarn weight and you've only got sock or sport weight around, then consider combining these yarns to form a heavier weight yarn. Yes, you can do that. It's allowed, mind blown. All you need to do is hold two or three or even four strands together and knit them as if they were one big strand of yarn. There's no need to twist them together at all. Just hold them in a bunch and knit. So you can use the same yarn held together or combine two different kinds to create a marled yarn. Recognize these guys? I recommend putting the yarns in a bowl so that they don't roll around and get tangled. Now the opposite holds true too. If you have thicker yarn with more than one ply, you can slowly untwist the plies and knit with a single ply or two plies held together. Here I'm untwisting this four ply super chunky yarn and I'm just separating the plies so I can roll them up later. There's a lot of untwisting and separating of the plies. So once the plies are separated, I can roll them into a ball. In this instance, I'm just gonna be knitting with this one ply. 
So this is not a quick process as you can see, but it could be done while you're watching TV or chatting with a friend. It's sort of mindless work. So after some untwisting, I've got my new thinner yarn. I've turned a four ply chunky weight yarn into a one ply light worsted weight yarn. Transformation complete. So next time you're eyeing new yarn, look to your stash and see if you can transform existing yarn into lighter or heavier weight yarn. Lastly, be mindful about your projects and purchases. Before going into a yarn store with all its beautiful yarn and needles and finished projects, have a purpose and plan for going inside. Otherwise you risk buying random balls of yarn just because they're beautiful and tempting. And I don't mean to lecture, it's just that I've been in this position so many times. So this is what I do for a lot of my purchases, knitting related or otherwise. I write down a list of things I wanna buy and then I just sleep on it for a couple days. And then I come back to my list and decide if I still want or need those things. So give yourself the space and time to reflect on potential projects and purchases. That's it for this video. I hope you got a lot of money-saving tips out of it. If I missed a tip that you used, then please share it down in the comments. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the YouTube algorithm and it really helps me out. And if you wanna see more videos like this one, then do subscribe. I'm Davina of SheepandStitch.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.